Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have an amazing special guest today back for the second time. Eric is here to talk about his success story, and I got so geeked out. I literally squealed out loud when I read his Facebook post about him quitting his corporate job after um, doing Amazon for several years. Of course, I don't want to spoil all the fun, but welcome, Eric, to the show. How are you, Eric? Hey, Kristen, how are you doing? It's great to uh, see you again, and it's a pleasure and honor to be on the podcast again with you. Oh, it's great to have you back. I've been looking forward to this day since the very first time that we spoke on the phone, a day when you could declare your quit day from your corporate job. So let's rewind a little bit for people. If you guys haven't listened to Eric's episode, it's like way far back in the archives. So make sure you uh, look up his name and listen to the old version because this is the um, renewed what's he doing now kind of a version of this story. So Eric, take us far back when you decided to start selling on Amazon to begin with? What was that motivation for you? Sure thing, Kristen. Um, yeah, the motivation for me uh, starting to sell on Amazon was initially to bring additional income into the family budget and to pay down debt and to build some more margin into, you know, my family's life. And as, as I had started selling on Amazon back in uh, uh, June of 2017, um, pretty much the first month that I started doing this, um, I realized I wanted to do it full time. Now, uh, I have an accounting degree. I worked in corporate America for 20 plus years, uh, worked in business operations, had a business background, and I just quickly and easily saw that this is what I wanted to do with my life. And so besides bringing additional income uh, to the family to help pay down debt, my ultimate goal was to you know, quit my corporate job. And so uh, starting in June of 2017, um, I just worked, you know, I worked both, both jobs and it, it, was, it was hard and it was challenging. And, you know, I learned a lot of lessons along the way. And, uh, you know, my first six months that I was, you know, selling um, back and forth to work, you know, on my one hour commute, I would be listening to podcasts, listening to YouTube videos, just soaking up everything I could do to learn about selling on Amazon. And that's another thing that I just really enjoy about this journey is all of the things that you learn. Um, three years and two months in, I still have tons of things to learn and things that I want to accomplish. Um, but, you know, about six months in, you know, towards the end of 2017, you know, I ran on to your uh, podcast and uh, YouTube channel and, you know, was very interested in, in the model of selling that uh, you're doing. And so, you know, I actually um, went to one of your uh, workshops in uh, 2018 and then um, went to another one just to get like a refresher and also to bring my wife with me to, so that she could, you know, learn more about it and, and see, you know, how it goes in 2019. So, um, her and I, you know, went to your um, workshop in Atlanta in early 2019, um, and, and that was the last time that I had, you know, seen you in person. And you know, I just really enjoy, uh, you know, the the times that we've been able to talk, and you know, I align with a lot of your uh, worldviews and um, the way you're a straight shooter in business. Um, I got a question for you. you yeah. Know I love and appreciate you say that. And by the way, you know, it was, it's always a pleasure to see you and then and meet your wife and all that kind of stuff and be, um, you know, if I can actually say that out loud, like a part of your journey, you know, I know at the very beginning, we spoke months into you just starting with Amazon and you had already had a plan. And I remember that first conversation, there was, you know, nothing involved. There wasn't coaching fees. It was just you and I having a conversation about Amazon and business. And you really were so hungry to learn. And I remember telling you on that very very first phone call that we had that I can't wait to hear about your quit day that 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 goal and dream that you had once you were already a couple months in you're like this is what I want to do and you know is it possible and is it realistic and how long did it take you and all these different things I remember telling you 
I can't wait for that quick day, quit day. We're going to have a party. And you're like, I don't know. We'll see, you know, but you know, I had that dream and you never, you never waver. You never give, you never gave up, but let's be real. There's definitely been a lot of ups and downs when it comes to this journey and going, you know, here and there. So um, what do you remember specifically in the beginning? You know, you were learning, you came to a workshop, you learned even more. I know you're in a lot of Facebook groups, learning from different people. Um, what do you feel like one is one of the most pivotal things that you learned in this business? Um, boy, there's been just so much, but I think one of the greatest things that I learned and realized in the beginning was that you have to have help and you have to build a team. Um, one of the, one of the words that is always on my mind and that I am thinking about is, well, I'll give you more than one word, but because it's all part of the same type of thing. Um, scale and expansion, building, growing. You cannot do that if you're trying to do this by yourself. And so um, I would say that that is probably one of the biggest things that, that I've learned and that has helped me and helped our business grow. And I'll give you examples of, of how that has transpired, you know, from a real perspective, because, you know, what does that mean? Build, expansion, scale. So, you know, obviously in the beginning, you know, our, our main model uh, is retail arbitrage, and that still is, you know, one of our main models. And of course, you know, I was the one that was doing that. And so all of my free moments, you know, in the evenings on weekends and, and things, I would be out in the stores hitting it for retail arbitrage. And then of course I'd have to prep all that stuff. And then of course I'd have to enter it into my computer system and ship it and all that kind of stuff. So I did that by myself for the first year. Uh, we started in June of 17. Well, in May of 18, uh, we had our first, you know, expansion, and that was me bringing on kids from our church to help me prep, you know, high school kids. And I'll never forget that first day. Uh, it was a Saturday, and we, you know, we had tons of stuff to do. You know, we worked a good six to eight hours that day. It was such an overpowering feeling um, being able to have help in, in that whole process and to pay those young people. It was probably and, that moment where I remember thinking it's like this, like the equivalent to where it's like, oh my gosh, like, why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> right, right. Why, did I why didn't I do it sooner? Absolutely. Every and that's the that hires their first help or that that's what I would consider <laughs> good help. <laughs> Sometimes yes. we hire our first hire and they don't work out. I mean, it's plenty of times. Let's be real. I mean, I've had to hire and fire several times, but the reality is, it's like when you get good help and you realize the potential of paying someone else to do something so you can free yourself up to do like the major money-making tasks and business decisions that need to be made by the ownership, you know, ownership and leadership of that um, is such a freeing thing to be like, oh my gosh, the first time we actually sent stuff to the, we had partnered with the prep center and had our stuff not being delivered here and being delivered somewhere else was like, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I start this sooner? We could have been so much farther along, but you know, you don't know what you don't know and you've got to right. look along the way. So you hired some help and did that continue? And you started, that was just the first part of your team. Building? Yeah, that absolutely continued. So, you know, I had those, you know, those kids helping us all of 2018, you know, from May and, you know, then when 2019 rolled around, um, you know, I realized, okay, the next area of help that I have to, you know, conquer is I can't shop by myself. I, I, I've got to have more, more help. And so um, I realized that, you know, early in 2019 and, you know, so that was, that was 18 months ago. So 18 months ago, it was just me. Well, since that point, I now have five shoppers that shop for me spread out throughout the country. I have um, one here in Houston. I have one in Dallas. I have two in uh, South Carolina, actually uh, college students, and they both go to the same college. Um, and also my niece in Phoenix, which she is more of, I would consider a light shopper. You know, she's still in high school, but the point is, is I trained every single one 
of those shoppers. I trained them how to make decisions based on data, obviously using Keepa and using the Amazon seller app. And I also uh, have trained my Dallas shopper and my South Carolina, you know, college girls, how to prep their own shipments and enter them into inventory lab and ship it themselves, which of course that was huge also. That's so amazing. Of just, just so you know, everybody that's listening, just take a deep breath, press rewind and listen to that again. That, you know, Eric is one of those. Okay. So you guys know, I'm not shy about talking about my favorite business model, which is of course, wholesale bundles. And, and Eric and his wife both know how to do these and have come to workshops and have learned all the aspects of the research, which I know helps you make better product decisions and things like that. Even though wholesale bundles isn't your business model, you've learned a lot from that. But what the takeaway here specifically right here and right now is he decided that he needed help. And instead of just pigeonholing himself into his location and where he was, he decided that he was capable and able to train people to do basically clone himself. So I hear that so many times in businesses where people are like, I just need a clone of myself. If I could clone myself, then I could, you know, I could grow 10 times faster. And you basically did that. You said there is a way to teach what I know to other people and for them to carry them out. And I have confidence that they can execute that if I teach them. This is standard business procedures all over, right? You know, the company expands. Maybe Maybe a small restaurant starts up and they decide they want to expand and do everything else. Standard operating procedures, right? I mean, it's like a, sometimes us are, are entrepreneurs or people like that or people like me that have never been in the corporate world. I was like laughing at that because people are like, what are your SOPs? I'm like, what are you talking about? And then once they said that, I was like, oh yeah, I have those. And we just don't call them that. That's just like the stuff we do to get done. <laughs> Right, right. The reality is you took this opportunity and you knew you could not continue. Number one, that double hustle, right? Everyone starts, if you've got a nine to five, if you've got any sort of job that you're doing and you're doing Amazon as your second business or as your side hustle, whatever that is, you're going to double hustle for a while. And I know you mentioned 18 months. I know you worked a little bit longer than that. Yours is more like a three year kind of strategy. But even still, when my mom was partnering with me, we couldn't immediately pay both of our salaries. So she doubled double hustled for about 15 months, working, shopping, shipping, all that besides her regular job until we got to the point where that tipping point where it's like, we can't do this anymore. It's got to be one or the other because we need all of all hands on deck, all brains operating in the business, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I love that you decided that there were capable people, like it didn't have to be a clone of you, but that you could teach them your principles, your processes, your ways of decision making, and not just stopping there, but teaching them how to do the shipments from there. That is brilliant. It's the first time I've actually heard somebody do that from different locations. I absolutely love that. If anyone's in retail arbitrage, remember this because that's possible because Eric is doing it right now. So, okay. So you've got some shoppers, you've added shoppers, now people that are shipping. And I know you use a prep center sometimes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's the other thing, too, uh, uh, talking about um, a team. So I, I have these teams of shoppers, but then I also have teams of what I call the prep center team. And, and those are just people that you find across the country in geographic locations that you build a business relationship with and you trust. And the first prep center that I have ever used was because of you. I heard I heard you talk about my prep center on on podcasts back in uh, uh, 2017, the first year that I started doing this, and I had never heard of that, obviously. And the the, the whole concept of it just blew my mind because then I was like, "Hey, I can go anywhere. I can do this anywhere." And so, uh, you know, I, I've. I've worked with, uh, you know, the, the My Prep Center team there in Michigan, uh, Nathan, he's a great, great businessman, um, has a great business, but I've also um, developed relationships with other uh, prep centers, uh, New Hampshire, Delaware, um, Georgia, uh, Oregon, and so, you know, part of my business model, you know, we talked about retail arbitrage, I'll just give you a breakdown of my current business model because this will fit into, you know, where prep centers come into play for, you know, my business model. So my first uh, segment of business is what I'll call wonder hits. And those are products that you find that are very rare 
um, and very profitable, meaning they're $15 net profit items or more. And when you find a, what I call a wonder hit, you go to the ends of the earth and you find them and you get massive quantities and they sell. I, I could give you crazy examples that would just blow your mind. Uh, of course, I'm not going to give those away on the podcast because some of those things are still in play for me. But obviously, sometimes they run their course. But to give you an example, I've been on one that's been a wonder hit for over a year. Um, so they're out there. Um, then, of course, another big model that I have is store closings. Um, look at the retail landscape right now. It, it's a disaster. Well, all of that disaster is massive opportunity. Uh, you run the gamut. Toys R Us, JCPenney, sporting goods stores, grocery stores, tons of opportunity. Um, and then the other model is, of course, your basic retail arbitrage, getting into you know, stores and doing your regular retail arbitrage. Um, the also, the other model that I have is wholesale. I do have um, a couple of wholesale accounts right now, and those have been uh, very beneficial to me. Um, the so model, asking, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, is that, I was going to say, was that the, the rest of your business model there? Okay. Uh, well, I was just, that, those are the main models that I have, but then I have, you know, other models where I want to grow more into, and we can, we can talk more about that, uh, as far as, you know, when I came to the decision, I'm quitting the corporate and now having more time, but the other models that you know, I'm wanting to grow more, obviously, is wholesale bundles. And, and you know, I can be honest with you and you can crack the whip on me because, you know, I haven't built that as, as big or even close to as big as what I need to, but it's on my to-do list. Well, here's um, the thing. The great thing about that is that you're, you and now your wife as well are, are armed and ready to take that on when it's right for you. And that's what I love about it is that there's, there's stages and seasons for every business. And we had our stages and seasons. When I first started in 2008, I was, I had a flip phone and I was putting ISVN numbers into a flip phone with a, a seller tool a sitting on the floor of Salvation Armies and Goodwills and people's yard sales. And I, all I was doing was selling books. And usually my budget for the weekend for books was 20 bucks because we had mouths to feed and not a lot of money to feed them. And so I got my $20 and I thought I can buy as many profitable books as I can for $20. And of, of course, as we grow and we learn and we make those profits, I graduate into retail arbitrage and did that for a long time and as as with you we realized at a point that we were we were kind of building ourselves a prison we were constantly you know it was great because business was booming right but then you're constantly shopping every waking hour that's what you're doing and then you're prepping and then you're shipping so it's not just the thrill of the hunt and look at all these great deals but now you actually have to sell those great deals to make the profit right so right. You, you, you graduate into different business models and, and hybrids that work for you I still do a very small amount of either re what I call retail arbitrage or thrifting or things like that. I'm a yard sale junkie and estate sales are even better. I mean, those are my favorites. Um, but I still go there right now. I have a pile of books that's worth hundreds of dollars that I literally got at a yard sale for $2 because I can't help myself when I do that. But I do have, you know, a little bit reserved for, for those specific things. But as you grow, you realize your financial needs are bigger and your dreams are bigger and you realize that your budget's a little bit bigger so you can afford to start expanding and I love how you did that incrementally this is how you know I, I get mad when I hear some of these get rich quick things on, on YouTube or you've got some other people talking about Amazon and how you know you can make a hundred thousand dollars in 30 days and then you hear real stories like yours like mine like Lori's like Michelle's like everybody else has been on the podcast of saying yeah it took between you know two years, you know a year and a half to two years before I got to a point where I was kind of dialed in and I knew you know there's always got to be something around the corner and I think that's what I love about your forward thinking this is here is that you have this wholesale bundle knowledge to use when your company is ready to use it right now it's let's get established let's just make this work for the next six months or so staying at home no more corporate job and see the potential you have and then start delegating those things. So no apologies there at all. You've learned a lot along the way and you have really made so much progress when you've come to that. So when you talk about these different business models, I have to ask about the elephant in the room, right? Okay, because everybody knows with wholesale bundles, I love it because it's safe. I love it because there's a lot less risk to mitigate when it comes to different things. And um, 
Let's talk about how you mitigate your risk with um, the IP claims and copyright violations and cease and desist letters and, and brands, big brands that you can't sell. What is your strategy with that to protect yourself and your business from something like that going wrong? Sure. Uh, that, and that's a good question and a valid point. And what I, what I have done in my business model is just as I run into those types of you know, hurdles or roadblocks, um, I make a note of them, and then we just stay away from, from those particular um, products um, and, and brains. Um, you know, there's also, when you, when you mentioned the letters, because those are the ones that really just sort of irk me, you know, and that's one of the things that uh, can get under my skin, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I purchase a product that, you know, according to the Amazon seller app, I can sell, and then I get a letter from you know some law firm that says I can't sell it. Well, well, where's the discrepancy here? So really, um, you know, I just keep track of which particular brands uh, that like to file IP claims and then stay away from those. Um, I do realize though, you know, that 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 sometimes those things can happen and they're out of my control and I don't even know those particular brands, but. Um, you can mitigate that in, in certain ways from like data points where you review your, your Keepa graphs and you look at the number of sellers. And if you see that the, the, the seller for, you know, one or two years is just like one seller or two sellers, you think to yourself, okay, maybe this is a potential, you know, problem. Or you look at the listing and, and you see that the listing is sold by the brand owner. I stay away from those. I don't even, I don't even bother with it. So um, business is full of risk and I have accepted the risk of what some people would view retail arbitrage and being a risk. Um, and I just do my best to mitigate that by you know, you know, talking to my shoppers, letting them know which brands to stay away from, um, addressing issues when they come up on the seller account from Amazon, if they come up from time to time, and you know that's that's how I've done that. But I haven't I haven't let the potential for IP claims, you know, stop me. Um, business is full of risk, and if you're in if you're an Amazon seller, you have to accept risk, and <laughs> you have to push that, through it. That, that needs an amen right there. Uh, let's just be real because. You know, we all know we're playing on Amazon's playground. And uh, we've had this conversation several times before, and even back in the day and different things of where we're playing on their playground. And people want to hang out and complain about all their policies and regulations and how they don't know their ear from their elbow most of the time. These are all true things. But the reality is we also know that if you're selling product, Amazon is the best and top place to be right now and probably for the foreseeable future. Of course, there's going to be rising competitors and <clears throat> Walmart. I won't say that out loud, um, but the reality is that there are going to be more and more up and coming competitors. But right now, as it stands, if you want to sell product and make the most profit, Amazon is the place that you need to be. And I don't care if you're selling hand knitted blankets or if you're selling retail arbitrage, sell on Amazon. That's where all the customers are. 86% of U.S. households are Amazon Prime members. That is through the roof, mind blowing statistics. 86% of United States households have Amazon Prime. That's just the mind blowing to me. Like talk about market domination. Um, but anyway, the, the reality there is that there is some risk in business no matter what you're doing. As a matter of fact, I will throw myself under the bus this week and talk about my own risk because even with wholesale bundles, there's, I mean, way less risk, I'll be honest. I hardly ever get any sort of anything going on. Well, we had a licensing issue this year, this this past, actually it was like last month. And I had to fight with Amazon for literally, think, I think it was 15 days of back and forth cases and sending invoices and all these different things to finally um, get to the bottom of the license issue, which we were perfectly within our rights. We just got some wacky claim that we had to fight against. This is just part of business. Any business, whether you have a brick and mortar store and you're fighting your, your you know, lease holder with, you know, different, you know, you have a parking lot issue and who's going to pay for it? All these different things. There's always risk in business. And I love that you put it that way, because whether it's um, you know, some people are more risk tolerant, some people aren't, but also seeing the forest through the trees and realizing that 
there's risk and what, when there's the greater the risk, usually the greater the opportunity and the greater the result if you're willing to do it smartly. And I think really that's how you've been able to navigate um, this whole time with, with doing what you're doing. So, so you've got your prep center, you've got your shoppers and what other kind of, now that, um, so your quit day was officially in July. Yep, July 20th. July 20th, yay! So okay. Never forget that day. Right, it's one of those like, freedom! Like, my daughter right now with virtual school, when she closes her laptop for the day and is done with school, she always goes, freedom! And yes. I just laugh, like, you, you've been home this whole time, but like, she's like, done with school. And I just- And that, and that word, Kristen, is, is what my, what my motive for um, doing this job has morphed into and it morphed into very quickly, and that's the word freedom. And that, that word means a lot to me. And so, so describe the before and after of that, because I really want people to get a sense of the reality of what this truly feels like. Because there are people that were you three years ago, four years ago, maybe before you found Amazon and were kind of in this job just thinking, is this all there is? Is this the way that it's always going to be? And I'm just going to be in hopefully climbing this corporate ladder and hoping to retire by 60 and maybe make a few dollars. Like, I mean, what the difference between that and then the hope that you've got starting the business and now the reality of that pinch me moment. I'm like, you guys haven't read Dream Big, Step Small. That's my book. And in there we talk about this pinch me moment. And off air, right before Eric and I got on, he, he talked about that. It's like, I'm pinching myself every day that like, this is really my life. And I want you to just describe that because it's something that I think everyone somehow deep down longs for and doesn't know if that's real for them. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, let, let's just sort of try to contrast that to, you know, before, you know, I had my Freedom Day, July 20th, okay? And, and you touched on it, you know, when people are working their corporate job and they're wondering to themselves, is this is this all there is, you know, and you're just doing the same thing day after day and you're, you're commuting to work, you're dealing with your office politics, you know, you're working hard you, and sometimes you feel like you just aren't making the progress that you feel like you deserve or, or want to have. And, you know, you, you hit on it before, you know, before I even started on Amazon or even knew about it, you know, I had that feeling inside my, my soul where, you know, I wanted something else. I, you know, I, I, I had been through the wars of, of corporate politics and decisions that are made that you just, you don't understand, you know, what these people are thinking. And, you know, you think to yourself, you know, I could run a business and, I, you know, I would do it this way. And so I always had that desire in the back of my head as, as time went on in my corporate career that, you know, I wanted something different, you know, but of course, you know, I also knew that I had responsibility and that was providing for my family and doing what I had to do. And, you know, and then that morphed into, you know, picking up a, a second job of, of refereeing soccer on the side, you know, to help make extra money to, you know, have money for when the kids go to college and stuff like that. And, you know, and then thankfully, you know, I ran into the Amazon opportunity um, and, and quickly realized that this was it. And this is what I wanted to do. And this is how I was going to build that avenue and vehicle to obtain freedom. And so um, I just gr grinded it out for three years and, you know, understood all the way through that the main challenges were time and capital. Um, and that's still always a challenge. But to give you a picture now of what freedom feels like to me, and, and what it means now that I have that, you know, after my quit day of, of July 20th of this year. Um, <laughs> I'm a hard worker, but, you know, every morning when I get up, I have the freedom to, you know, choose my schedule on how I'm going to work that day. And most cases, I don't set an alarm to get up every morning. You know, normally I wake up around seven, but that was, that's unheard of to me <laughs> because I always had an alarm where I had to get up to get ready to get on that commute and make it into the office. Now I don't have to do that. Okay. Um, I have the decision power to decide how I'm going to run my business, how I'm going to uh, treat my employees that work for me, um, how I'm going to help them meet goals that they have. Um, 
also, you know, like in part of our, our model, we do a lot of retail arbitrage and we will take trips to other areas of the country. And so last month, my wife and I flew into Newark and we sourced in New Jersey and New York City itself. And Kristen, on a Saturday, after a week of being in the area on business, working hard, we had Saturday as our day off. Kristen, we went to um, Liberty Island. And as I'm taking that boat and I'm seeing the skyline of New York City and coming on and looking at Lady Liberty, I'm weeping as I'm looking at that statue and realizing how deep in my heart that means, that freedom, that liberty, that opportunity. We all have that opportunity. And so we were on that island and we were talking to um, one of the um, rangers on that island. And, you know, I asked, I asked her, I said, so what's the normal, you know, visitors that show up here on a Saturday, you know, pre-COVID? And she said 25 to 28,000 people on a Saturday. When we got there at 10 in the morning, we left at two. When we left, we asked another ranger, how many people have been here so far? A thousand, a thousand people. So on a Saturday in New York City, we fit in a trip to Liberty Island. We went to Central Park. We went to Times Square and we finished that Saturday with a dinner in downtown Chinatown eating at an Italian restaurant. We fit all that into one day in New York City unheard of pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. So we, did, we did things that we've always longed to do, and we did it together as a husband and wife. We worked hard, and then we played hard. That was August. September, just a couple weeks ago, we, went, we flew out to Seattle, and we worked that area. We worked it hard for a week and a half. We fit in two fun things. We hiked around Mount Rainier on a Saturday. We hiked up to 6,000 feet. Then another one of our fun days, we went off of San Juan Island and kayaked and did something we've never done before. We kayaked and we saw, you know, seals and uh, sea otters and bald eagles. And we did that together and we saw areas of beauty in the country. And so just being able to do those types of things are just overwhelming. And that's what freedom is now. Freedom is the opportunity. You know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, people talk a lot about retirement and what are you going to do in retirement? You're going to work all of your, you know, younger years, you know, putting money away and all this stuff. And then, well, when I retire and I'm like, how about now? How about right now? Because, you know, we're both Christians and we both know, like, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're guaranteed right now. We're not guaranteed. Like, look at 2020 and how um, horrible it's been for a lot of people, but also how eye-opening it's been. You realize you only have the here and now and all the things you would have, could have, should have that now maybe you can't do because of COVID, whether it's been economical or physical or all the different things that are shut down, the time is right now. So instead of waiting till you're retired to experience all these things while you're still young and healthy and your wife can go with you, you're experiencing the world and running a business and no more corporate schedule for someone to say Monday through Friday, nine to five or, you know, eight to three or whatever it is, you have to be here at this location doing this job. I mean, freedom is described for so many different people in so many different ways, but I definitely love how you and your wife are living that because that's a lot of our philosophy right now too, is that what we have is right now. We're not, I know my dad passed away um, in 2017 of cancer and he always had said, you know, well, when I retire, when I retire, I'm going to do this. When I retire, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and that. And then he never got the opportunity to retire. And so right before he passed away, he said that he said, you know, he said, I don't really have a lot of regrets in life, but one of the things is, is I constantly was rating until I retired or until I had a little bit more money or until I had this and that. And he said, now look at me. It's like, I'm not even going to get that opportunity. He said, so, you know, buy the boat, take the vacation. When he used to say, you know, boats are a waste of money and this and that, he changed his tune and he said, you know what? All you've got is right now. So, you know, if you want to do it right now, great, do it, you know? And so I think I just love the fact that, you know, your freedom day has really realized itself even in just a few short months. So your all your kids are off to college, right? Is that my understanding? Yeah, yes, actually uh, my son, he graduated in, uh, from college um, 
in 2017, um, and he's married now. And also another big event that happened earlier this year is we became grandparents. They had uh, a little boy. So, you know, I, I was able to go and see him uh, right before Labor Day. That was another trip I took up to Dallas. In fact, that was when I was training my shopper up there on the on how to do a shipment. So, you know, it's it's fun things like that where, you know, if I was working the corporate job, I wouldn't be able to just drop, you know, at a, at a moment's notice and go up to Dallas or like this past week, you know, my daughter called me. Uh, she ran into a high water puddle and her, her car you know, stop. She had to pull off the side of the road. I, I just left the house to go pick her up. You know, all these little things, are part of life that now I can do, whereas before I couldn't. You know, that's one of the most important things. I know other people may not notice, but it's the countenance. I can see the shift to where you are still a hardworking individual and you're running a business in a company, but that spring in your step that is there now that wasn't before is that now you're doing it all for your family and for your well-being and for your future and the future of the legacy you want to live for leave for your children and your grandchildren and things like that and there's nothing more powerful than taking control of what we can control and deciding that you know, this year does not have to look like years past that we can and let's not forget and let's not I don't want to forget to remind people that you earned this. This doesn't just happen overnight, you guys. This doesn't happen into, oh, 30 days into my Amazon business, I'm rock and roll. You put, you did your due diligence, three hard years of nights and weekends and traveling. I remember several times you coming to Michigan and leaving your family behind and shopping till you drop, dropping stuff off at Prep Center and flying back home before Monday morning. That was your life for three years and you have earned every bit of this quit day and freedom day. And now it's, it's, it's a different level of responsibility, but it feels lighter, even though you're carrying right. all of it now, it feels lighter because it's, it's your own. It's not someone else telling you what you have to do, what you have to be, what you can't be all in that, in that sense. And I just want everyone to know that this is all possible. It doesn't come free. It doesn't come easy. It's hard work, and but it's rewarding work when you get to declare what you have declared this year as far as right. free from someone else's um, schedule. It really is, Kristen. And I'll just say, you know, as, as you, you know, reference the three years um, and, you know, I'll just give an analogy. Um, you, this is like war in, in a, a certain aspect, okay? Because, you know, for me, doing the double hustle for three years, it was like, it was intense and it was hard. And, you know, I, I like to, I don't know if I like to, I, I have this way of sometimes, you know, when I watch certain movies or if certain movies speak to me in a certain way, I can apply some events of those things to like, you know, business life or, or, you know, life in general and, you know, business and, and being an Amazon seller is like, it's, it's like war because you're going to battle with a lot of different things. And if, if you've ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, okay, I, obviously I'm not comparing this directly to, to, to that and what those men went through. But there was a certain moment in that movie that was very poignant to me as far as looking at business and the Amazon business and doing a double hustle for three years. And that's that moment when that squad was on their way to find, you know, Ryan. And they come across this uh, pillbox, this German pillbox. And they're talking before they attack it. They're like, hey, let's just go around this. We don't have to deal with this. Okay. You know, they've already been through murder you know they they survived the normandy beach they've survived all these other battles and they're they come to this decision point and the 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 leader you know tom hanks he said we're attacking this pillbox because we're not leaving it for other people to come through and get attacked so they attack this pillbox and you see this you see the bravery and the courage of what these men go and do and they they they, 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 they kill the pillbox, all right? But, you know, one of their best buddies gets hit and he's shot up and they're all standing around and they're trying to help him. And this guy's dying right there before their eyes. And they, they're just, they're totally spent 
they're, they just are at the end of their rope. And then there's one German survivor and they pull him and they're like, they want to kill the guy. All right. Because they have all of this anger and pent up, you know, frustration. And finally, you know, Tom Hanks, if you remember, they're all fighting, they're about ready to just lose it. And Tom Hanks, you know, they had this bet where they wanted to know what he was. And he was a school teacher and he tells them. And when he tells them, it calms them down. And I remember the sergeant in that scene, at the end of their discussion, it's like, pick up your gear and let's move. And there's so many times where in this business, you feel frustrated, you feel totally spent, you feel defeated. But if you don't give up, if you work hard and you don't give up, you can accomplish a lot of great things. And that was a scene that I just thought I'd share with you. I don't know if you get the feeling or understanding of what it is, but you know, business is war and you got to work hard and you just got to fight through the, the down times and the struggles uh, for you know, achievement. That's super helpful because no matter how we choose to internalize it, that really is the reality. I mean, make no mistake, there is going to be ups and downs. There's going to be good years and bad years. And when I say years, let's not just think, oh my gosh, we had a bad week, we had a bad month. There are going to be bad years. It just happens where, you know, the landscape changes. There's things like this year, like, you know, political unrest and racial issues and all kinds in the pandemic, let alone a global pandemic. No one planned for this. Some people really, their businesses took off and did crazy. And some people had to close their doors forever, whether it was online or offline or whatever it is. I see businesses closing by the thousands around us. And it makes my heart sad to see somebody building that up. But every closed door leads to another door. And we don't know what the next chapter is going to hold. But what we do know is that, like you said, it is a battle. There's always going to be ups and downs. There's always going to be things. It's not this straight line to success like everybody thinks. Oh my gosh, like we just kept growing and growing and growing. And yeah, there's definitely bumps in the road. But you know, you like you said, you pick up your gear and you keep moving because that's part of the business. We know it's not all sunshines and rainbows. But the the there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's the thing, isn't it? If we keep our eyes focused on our ultimate goals and what you wanted, which is arriving for you at this moment, does that mean you're, you know, gonna you sold your business and you're not living the luxury life of a Kardashian or something? Well, no. But what it means is your freedom meant more was more important to you than working at some corporate job to not pay a, to to not have any sort of risk to not take on the fact that you were going to go to war and you were okay with it because you were fighting for the right thing and the right reasons. And I think that's why it really works out is because, you know, if you know what you're fighting for and knowing what you're fighting to what you want, the battle isn't as hard knowing that there's the end, there's this prize at the end. I mean, even just like the movie where their goal was to find Private Ryan and bring him home, like regardless. And um, I, I love that movie for so many reasons, but the idea that they were all gonna, you know, he didn't wanna leave when they found him and like, we're gonna stay and fight here, you know, that that sort of thing. It's the same type of thing. They, have a, they had a collective, um, goal going forward. And I think we all need to have uh, those collective goals. So when, when just wrapping up here, you know, with that, with all that freedom in mind, what do you feel like is, is the next step for you? Because obviously this is the beginning also of something new for you with this newfound freedom, but also this new shoulder of responsibility. Cause let's not, let's, let's not sugarcoat that. Like, although you've quit this corporate job, now it is all on you to make it right. work. And right. We both know that that feels like a lot of pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's, that was one of the, that was one of the fear factor points of when I came to my decision on July 20th. And obviously we probably don't have time to go through all of the, the, the makeup of that decision and everything that went on. But, you know, one of the things that I had when I made that decision was fear. And, you know, the fear was, Hey, you're giving up a corporate job. You're giving up a corporate salary. Are you sure you're ready to do this? And then, but then also, I was like, you are at the decision point right now. This is everything that you have dreamed of, and you are now at this point. Now you just have to make this decision. And I remember, and that was on a, a Friday, where I knew that weekend I had to make that decision. 
And, you know, my wife and I went out for uh, dinner uh, Sunday evening. We talked about the pros and cons. We wrote it down on a piece of paper. We had about 15 pros and two cons. And we looked at each other and we said, we're doing this. But you're right. It's now all on me. And so the things that I am going to be, you know, working on and that I need to press on is to grow other segments of the business. And obviously, you know, one of those things is to uh, develop more wholesale bundles and to add that um, segment of business onto our current model. You know, I, I've created bundles. Um, I've seen some with success and I've seen some with failure. Um, right now, I've got two that uh, I would consider, you know, fairly successful. They're, you know, there isn't, they're not what, you know, I, when I say success, I want something that's selling you like five times a day, you know, and maybe that's, you know, crazy out of the, you know, out of the blue pie in the sky type thing. But, but anyway, what I'm saying is, is my goals and, and the things that I'm going to be working on um, over the next year after I get through Q4 um, is to, you know, grow the segment of wholesale bundles. Um, also maybe start looking into um, if private label is, is a possibility on some things. And of course, doing that the right way, um, because there's a lot of things in that. You know, to be honest, yeah. I'll tell you that, that's a place where you get to a little bit later on. We both took yeah. similar journeys to where we are and, and starting even with used books all the way from retail arbitrage, wholesale, wholesale bundle. And this, this year, while um, COVID is pushing it back a little bit just because of shipping issues, factory issues, stuff like that. But, um, putting our first real, I mean, we've had other private label products that have been add-ons to some of the bundles that we have just in a smaller scale. And this year we kind of went all in with another um, private label product, bringing it all the way from creation, all the way through customs to our door landing here. And it is part of a bundle, but it's something that we, you know, from start to finish have private labeled and even made our own, all the bells and whistles. And I wanted to be able to do that. And this is, this was the year for that, which I don't know, we chose that before this, but after I will say we're, we're about a month out from full launch and it should have been a little bit sooner than this, but um, due to COVID and the things we can't control, we just roll with it. But honestly, you know, later on in business is when you start to take on things like private label, because um, you actually have the experience, the knowledge, and probably a little bit more capital than you may have had starting up front to be able to do something without affecting your day-to-day -day business. We've brought this product completely to, it's not even to market yet, yet we've spent thousands of dollars, you know, developing and all these, the different products and stuff. So there's definitely those stair steps to, to get you to different, you know, we call private label the top of the food chain of Amazon. But reality is I actually think it's wholesale bundles because now if you got private label, you have an opportunity to put that with other products that already exist. So you're not reinventing the wheel all the time. You're just making the wheel a little bit different for people to enjoy. So, I mean, I can't wait to hear where, what your business, how your business goes from here on out. I know now that you have all of that, huh, I'm joking. I, I'm not saying free time as if it's free time, but you have full mental capacity to dedicate to your own business and your goals. I mean, you're, you're going to be, um, you're going to be a rock star. I already know that. I mean, I just, I, I said that to you three years ago, just yeah. for the record. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that conversation. That was a, that was a very, very important conversation in our, our business journey. I just, I remember that. I remember just saying, I can't wait for your quit day. And we have so many, you know, success stories, you know, that, that we get to be a part of. And I'm so thankful for that to be able to be a little bit of a part of that, but also um, I'm just so happy for you and for your wife. It, could, it couldn't have been for a better family and better people. And I know that, you know, you work hard. It's not just uh, this, not, this isn't dumb luck. This is, no, it's not. You worked your tail off. You trusted God with your vision. You trusted him with your, with your finances and with your decision making and it's paying off and you're going to continue to um, grow and, and move forward towards your goals. But again, I love that you guys are doing the things now, not just for the business, but seeing the world and being with each other. Those are the most important things in life. I mean, mm -hmm. and you get to experience that because you worked so hard for three years. So soak it all up as much as you can because um, you've earned it. And yeah. if um, I just tell everybody know in the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us, use the hashtag Eric 
um, or code word to be able to get in. You can talk to sellers like Eric and he will share his experiences with you and have conversations because we need other people to look up to in business. So there's somewhere, somebody out there listening right now that's you three years ago or maybe four years ago, just starting Amazon and wondering if this is possible. And that's why I love to do success stories because it's not just possible, it is reality. It's just step by step, small steps. You didn't do it overnight. You did it over time. You had a plan, you had a vision and you worked your tail off. I mean, I remember the one time when you gave me your profit and loss for the year and you're like, check this out and all the traveling and all the expenses. And you're like, is this even going to be possible for me? Look at these numbers. And I'm like, just hang in there and keep doing what you're doing. And you know, adding the team members. So I really appreciate your time and your energy. And speaking of, I have to, you know, shameless plug here. We are taking the Confident Wholesale Bundlers Workshop virtual this year. And so everybody has now a chance to sign up, watch your inbox or go to mommyincome.com slash virtual. And you will be able to see what the virtual workshop is because we can't wait until 2021 to be able to start making money and doing what you're doing what you need to do for your business. The time is right now. There's never going to be a really good time to start growing your business or to go all in. If that's what your vision is, it's right now is the right time. There's never a right time to decide, oh, I'll wait till next year or I can't travel. So I guess we can't do workshops. No, people need to grow their businesses right now. If that's your dream and your goal, mommyincome.com slash virtual, come to the virtual workshop and we will help you build bundles just like other people. So again, Eric, thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for sharing your story. And again, you guys can reach out to Eric in the Facebook group and ask him questions. He's been willing to answer questions all these years for other people as he's grown his business and he is able to do that along with many other sellers in the Facebook group. So Eric, I can't wait for the next conversation we have three years from now when, you know, you're, you're probably bought a private island by then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great talking with you, Kristen. And, and I would just say again to, you know, people out there, just work hard um, and, and just don't give up. Don't give up, but take it one day at a time and realize that you, you, as you work hard, you need to be thinking about how you can grow and expand and scale, and that involves having help. And so you have to look at your own situation and see what that's, you know, what that would look like for you. Um, but that's that's some of the main things that I would say is you can't do it all yourself. Awesome, that is a great takeaway. Again, Eric, thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you guys same time, same place on the Amazon Files. Bye bye.